All right. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Kenji Kakaya from the Simon Center at Stony Brook, who's going to talk about uh, Chrome Off House Storm Conversions Filter Community Tags. Uh, so thank you very much for introductions. And I'm very honored to speak in this conference to celebrate Professor Kuranishi. So uh, I wanted to start some uh, souvenir. Uh, it was not direct uh, connection because I have very brief, only direct, brief direct connections. But uh, it was uh, my souvenir at 1996 uh, when I was writing some paper with Carl Ono, where uh, I introduced a notion which we call Kuranishi structures. And since we are so much concerned with this Kuranishi's local pictures, I wanted to read some of his papers, especially his papers on the formation of complex structures. That time, uh, this book was not yet published. So I have to take a Xerox copy from his Annals of Mass papers. It was rather lengthy papers. And then, uh, so it was this paper on the local complex families of complex analytic uh, structures. And this paper is actually very rather lengthy. But uh, then I just learned that he wrote another paper so after, short after, it's a new proof of the existence of local complete families of complex structures. And this second paper is in a sense shorter. And uh, the contents of the second paper is closer to what many people are doing later on. He takes something like, he takes this uh, image of a deep operator on the, on a, of the tangent bundles, and he takes some um, complementary subspace of the image, finite dimensional subspace, and do some kind of functional analysis to get this universal family. So, so this, this makes a paper much shorter. And the first paper, he do mo much more calculations and more computational proof. And uh, uh, I'm afraid to say, I still do not understand the, the, the full detail of his uh, first papers, but uh, I can mention that. So this is a part of his first papers. You observe here that he has this a lot of brackets and the Q is, I think, uh, inverse of D bar. So, he, he, so the, the construction he, he gave in this first paper is he gave a solution of the nonlinear equation D bar B plus B uh, bracket B is zero using some formal power series. And the formal power series looks like uh, this kind of things. And if you know some uh, later development, people start using some kind of infinite algebra to have this kind of deformation theory. So this, uh, so, so the, the theorem, one can say, say the theorem, you have, a, you have a Lie algebra, you have a differential graded Lie algebra, then you can squeeze this differential graded Lie algebra structures to something called the error infinity structures on its cohomology. Then, then on the, on the, on the cohomology, you can kind of study this uh, more Carlton equations, error infinity versions. So that's some people doing. And I believe that his first paper is doing something which is basically similar in a, in, a, in a very computational way. Of course, in those days, this kind of language is not developed. But that, that's why this paper, I think, is lengthy. So he has to do more explicit and kind of uh, uh, works. So, so it is what I said. So, so Kranis is under the papers, has some uh, kind of infinite algebra given some universal deformations. That's Kranish pictures. But, uh, so the, but this, uh, this second method of this uh, infinite algebra go to universal deformation it has related to recent development of deformation theory. People go to uh, real algebra or associative algebra to air infinity or a infinity algebras and more a equation can be described purely algebraically from those infinite algebra language. And also people found that this uh, construction is related to some mathematical physics like uh, the normalization theory. So I, I think uh, this is what, what, something essentially written in his first papers, but uh, I, I honestly do not understand it. So what I want to talk today is, is a bit kind of opposite direction. I want to study the formation theory of infinite algebra or infinite category. And you know this, uh, so in the Kranich and those books, um, infinite algebra is used to study modular spaces, but I want to use modular spaces to study the formations of infinite algebra or infinite category. So that's something I, I, I want to explain. So, let, so this is related to mirror symmetry, but some, I, I want to start with uh, uh, something which should be uh, in a B model side. It's a complex deformation theory of complex structures. But the deformation of complex structures I want to study is uh, formal deformation. So you have this uh, uh, formal power series ring. Then, then it's, 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 it's a speed is uh, just a disk with diameter zero. So yeah, it has just two points, uh, special fiber and the general fiber. And then, uh, then so, so these are the formations. And, uh, and I want to take this n-fold branch to covering. So Q 
the place of t over one over n, and then you, you pull back, so you have another family. Then you take the limit, and n go to infinity. Then we have some, uh, and we also allow blow up at the five of zero. So this is something called uh, related to called uh, rigid analytic geometry. You have the formal deformations. You, you take branched covering around, around zero infinity many times and allow this blow up at zero. So you have some uh, some kind of deformation theory, and uh, so you consider this uh, limit of uh, derived category of coherency of this uh, and, 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 and for the branch to cover and what happens when n goes to infinity. Then this, this family, yeah, so you, you, got, you got this one, and this is a triangle category, and whose coefficient ring is something called a Q Novikov ring. So what it is, it is a formal power, it is a kind of infinite formal power series, and the coefficient AI is a complex number, and the exponent lambda I of T is a non-negative rational number which converts to infinity. So this is something which back geometry used as a Novikov ring, except this exponent is a rational number. And we consider it the field of fractions, which is lambda Q. And then uh, you can also consider this, uh, 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 the lambda <laughs> covered coherence shift whose, whose coefficient is extended to this uh, field. Okay, so now I want to introduce some Some metric on the on the set of object of this derived category of this uh, yeah set of object of this derived category. So the metric is the following thing. Suppose we have two chain complex of coherent shifts on some uh, x of m. Then uh, we, we, assume, we assume that they are uh, they are chain homotopy equivalent at a general at a Generic fiber. So it means that if you invert this formal parameter t, then they are chain homotopy equivalent. But then we consider, uh, we consider some distance. So these two, e1 and e2, are smaller than epsilon. If there exists t and t prime from some branch to cover e1 to the power m to e2 to the power m and the inverse, and also s, which is a self map from e1 to e1 m to e1 m. And S prime, which is a self map to E2M to E2M. And we require that D of T and D of T prime is zero. So it's a closed, closed. So it means that it's a chain map. And then if you compose T and T prime, it is chain homotopic T to the power epsilon of the identity. And chain homotopy is S, DS. And T prime composed with T is a T prime epsilon to identity. And chain, homot chain, chain homotopy is D of S prime. If you know that uh, this implies that uh, if you invert T, then this E1 and E2 are chain homotopy equivalent, the same isomorphic object in a lab category of coherency. But uh, uh, before you invert, since you don't invert T, so this is uh, not, not isomorphic, but you can make this uh, chain homotopy, the denominator of chain homotopy, very small. That, that is the notion of this distance. I think this, this gives some metric on a isomorphism classes of modular space of coherency in this inductive limit. And that's something uh, I want to study. So, uh, so now we, we consider this uh, space of object of the category of X of M and take its inductive limit and then go to infinity. And it is a metric space with this metric. And I want to take completions of this uh, metric space. And that's, that's something uh, I want to study in, uh, in a B side. I believe something equivalent is known in, in complex geometry or algebraic geometry. And I want to explain what, what it corresponds in symplectic side of the story. So, uh, so, so, it, so the, the, the mirror of this in the symplectic side is something related to Hamiltonian dynamics. So this looks very much different, but it's, that, that's why I think it's interesting. So we consider this symplectic manifold X and we consider H that is a time dependent Hamiltonian. So it, it's a function you know, X cross zero one to R. And we consider, so HT is just, uh, uh, we fix this second factor and we take a, a function of X. And we take Hamiltonian vector field on this X, HT. <coughs> and then we have this uh, uh, one parameter family of symplectic diffeomorphism. So if you, uh, uh, phi T H, so that at zero, T zero H is identity map. And if you take derivative of phi T H, it is just uh, this vector field, Hamiltonian vector field. So you have this Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. And the, the group of Hamiltonian 
diffeomorphism monophysism of X is the set of all P H1 and H is goes all, all the set of the time dependent Hamiltonians. So this is an important group and one of the most important objects of study is the best geometry. And then uh, the one very important discovery, which is one of the kind of discovery uh, when simplex geometry, global simplex geometry is invented is uh, by Helmut Hofer. So he found a metric on this group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. So what's what the metric? So, we, so suppose we have this time dependent Hamiltonians and we take this uh, norm of the Hamiltonian, some norm of the, norm of the Hamiltonian. It is the integration over T uh, of sup of HT minus e inf of HT. We take this difference because if you just uh, shift HT by constant, it doesn't change the Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. So we take this difference and then we integrate over T from zero to one. That is this norm. Then the Hofer norm is, uh, so the, if you have a phi element of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, we consider all the time independent Hamiltonians, which gives this phi at time one. Yeah. And that, that is the issue man called this uh, phi of norm of phi. And then the definition by Hofer of this Hofer distance between two Hamiltonian diffeomorphism is area phi and C. And then we take phi composed by C inverse and it, it's norm in this sense. So, so and one, one very important theorem by Hofer it's actually defining a metric on this group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. Most of the property is uh, not so difficult, but the most deep property is that if this, if this norm is zero, then phi and C is uh, equal. That's highly non-trivial because you take this infimum. And this is one of the theorems which kind of shows that the existence of simplex topology. So now Chekhanov um, gives similar things for this uh, Lagrangian. So we, co we consider lab X, the space of all Lagrangian sum manifold of X. And suppose you have this two element on this, on this space, and it's of Chekhanov distance is an infimum of this norm of phi of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, which send L to L prime. And that is Chekhanov's distance. And what he proved is that uh, this is again a metric on the space of all Lagrangian sum manifold. It, and the most deep property is that if this distance is zero, two Lagrangians are the same. And that is highly non-trivial. One use this kind of high-tech method to prove it, and Chekhanov kind of proved it using some variant of uh, play of Morgi. And so we take these two elements. Uh, let me say that if this, if two Lagrangian submanifolds are not Hamiltonian isotopic, then this met distance is infinity. So you know, you know, I, at, at the beginning I mentioned that you have a two objects of derived category of coherence shift, which gives the same element as a generic fiber that correspond to this Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. Okay, so now I want to state uh, some, uh, some version of homological mirror symmetric conjecture over Novikov ring. So it's the following things. If, uh, if X omega is, is uh, related to this uh, 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 script X, which is a family of uh, C to the power C, a uh, formal power series over C, then we consider this uh, completions of space of Lagrangian sum manifold on, on, on this uh, of a check kind of metric. And then it, it is a, this completion is a subset has a natural map to the space of completions of inductive limit of this space of derived category of coherence if x of x of m. And the completion is taken with the metric as I explained first. And the conjecture that, so this, this inclusion, uh, a, a kind of part of multiple equivalence of a filter diversity category to a full subcategory on this uh, deep derived category. So that, that somehow is a, a, a homological mirror symmetry conjecture over lambda zero. And uh, I think the homological mirror symmetry uh, was introduced by Konsevich, and it was very difficult at the beginning, but by effort of many people, recently there are many results of homo homological mirror symmetry, which prove at least partially or give some good insight. But I think as far as I know, all the results are over Novikov field. So um, people just consider this structure over, over this generic point, not, not on this, uh, Point and this this uh, study of, of a Novikov ring is somewhat important as I explained. It is related to this uh, Hofer distance or Chekhanov distance of uh, group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, and that's one very important subject of study of um, of simplex topology. Okay, so now I want to first state the theorem. There is at least the following thing. So we consider this completions of the set of Lagrangian sum manifold, and we take so I, I, actually I want to define 
in PG category, so that uh, all of this is an object. But uh, I, I try to prove it, but then there are some somewhat technical problem, but I, it might, might be deep. I can prove only the following thing. So let me take um, any L separable subset. It means that it has a dense countable subset. But, uh, but then on, on, we can define NPT category whose object is, is, is in on this uh, uh, script L. So uh, as far as uh, uh, the set of objects is countable, we can do it. And one important point is that we can kind of go to, we can extend Freya theory to the closure of this uh, space of Lagrange summary for with respect to whole second kind of metric. So, and, uh, so I want to explain why one can extend this Freya theory to the closure. So that, that is related to this uh, C0 robustness of most homology. So there is some story called the persistent homology, which is first introduced, I think, in data science or kind of things. But uh, it, it, it is related to this uh, um, uh, C0 robustness. So for that, what does C0 robustness mean? I consider this uh, two MOS functions. Well, one is this MOS function, which has only uh, maximum P and minimum Q. And uh, I, I want to kind of deform it in a C0 sense. So you have this two new critical point is, is, is coming. I think the idea is that uh, and this, and this homology is that uh, some information on topology you got, it has a noise. So the noise is C0 small, but not C1 small, C1 small. So the number of critical point is not invariant. So this is rather mild, but you may have some very, very kind of complicated function, which has a lot of, lot of max and a lot of mean, kind of zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. But then there, what, what is uh, persistent homology people say that this two most theory is somewhat similar. It means that, uh, so if F1 minus epsilon, C0 distance is smaller than epsilon, then you can say some most homology is close. And I want to explain how, in which sense it is close. So we consider the most complex of F, but I use this Novikov ring uh, to make it a kind of, to have to explain this. So Novikov ring, so, oh, I'm sorry. So we consider this free uh, lambda zero module generated by the set of critical points of F. And I want to define boundary operator, boundary of P. Usually, so this most homology, we count the modular space of gradient line from P to Q and Q. So that, that, that is the usual boundary operator. But I want to add this uh, term, which is uh, FP, I, maybe FQ minus FP, yeah. Kind of T to the power of the difference of uh, most function, very most function. So that, that is this um, um, most, most homology with Novikov thing coefficient. So let me see what it happens. So we consider this very simple most functions. Then you have a P and Q, and you know, usually most homology is just vanish. Boundary P is Q, so it vanishes. But in this case, it's boundary P is T to the power A Q. So the most homology is lambda zero divided by T to the power A lambda zero. So you have some torsion in a sense of Novikov ring. And you take another, another functions, we have a P Q and a small, two small um, critical points, X and Y. Then the most homology became a direct product of uh, two, two factors. One is lambda zero, T to the power A prime lambda zero. The other is lambda zero divided by T to the power epsilon lambda zero. And epsilon is the difference of these two critical points, X and Y. And A prime is the difference of two critical points, P and Q. So A and A prime is very close, and epsilon is very close to zero. So you see that you can say that this, these two are somewhat similar. If you say that the kind of small torsion is just zero. And if you remember that the definitions I made about this derived category thing, and this is smaller than epsilon in that sense. So this persistent homology thing, so, so, this, so this means that if you put up this uh, uh, most function in a C0 sense, then you have most homology is, is very, does not change so much in that particular sense. So, so this is the most homology. And we can do the similar business for Lagrangian Freya theory. So Lagrangian Freya theory is in a sense some kind of a, a version of MOS homology with some uh, quantum effect. So suppose you have these two Lagrangian sum manifold, which is transversal. Then we define Lagrangian Freya homology using this modular space of homotopy strip in place of gradient lines. And then there are general result, uh, which is, 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 this, this uh, Freya homology is, is, is a, direct sum of lambda zero divided by t to the power ai lambda zero. And ai is a number from zero to infinity. And uh, I can arrange so that ai is not uh, increasing, so it's, it's kind of strictly decreasing. And in the case they are transverse and compact, 
then uh, only finite remaining of a th zero. So you, you, I say that lambda zero t to the power zero lambda zero is zero in, in, a, in a usual sense. If your AI is zero, then this, this factor is zero. And if your AI is infinity, lambda zero divided by t infinity lambda zero is just a lambda zero. So we, we, yeah, we can just arrange this. It means that this AI is a kind of just describe this, this module. And all finitely generated, finitely presented lambda module, lambda zero module is written in this form. So this AI is an invariant. And we call this AI as a torsion exponent, range is finite. And the number of infinity, infinitely many AI is called a batch number. So this batch number and torsion exponent is an invariant of the Ramanian submanifold. Then what to, uh, I proved with O, Ota, Ono in our book of 2009 is the following things. Suppose uh, we have this uh, L and L prime, two Ramanian submanifold, which are transversal. And we take phi, which is a Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. morphism. And I consider a free homology of phi of L and L prime. And I, I assume still phi of L, L and L prime is transversal. Then, I, I, so, the, so the, the, this, this AI is a free homology of L and L prime, and B is a free homology of L and L prime. Then what we can prove is that the difference between AI and BI is smaller than this Hofer norm of phi. So, so this is very similar to the statement that uh, most homology is, uh, is, is C0 stable with respect to the change of most function. This, this Hofer norm is something like a C0 norm of the uh, most functions. And you know, uh, Hamiltonian diffeomorphism uh, include uh, differential of the Hamiltonians. So if you look this, uh, what Hamiltonian diffeomorphism looks like, it is very chaotic. And in the same way that if you change this uh, uh, most functions by C0 difference, then you know, mo most, most, fun most homology is something related to the D of F. So Lagrangian Freya theory of D of F is something like a most homology of F. And the D of F, and if, if, if ch you change F in a C0 norm, D of F changes so much. For example, you can take the limit so that F is just a continuous function. So in a sense, uh, it, it, it implies that we can define free homology of D of continuous function. So D of continuous function is very chaotic object, but still we can do Freya theory. So this is what, what, what is done in this uh, theory. And so, so this kind of relation to persistent homology to Freya homology is studied also by Alvarez, Asher, Polotelevich, Bilan Cormier, and maybe Biterbo and those people. So, so then, then I want to mention the statement that Lagrangian free homology depends continuously on Hofer Chekhanov metric on the Lagrangians. And uh, so what, what I want to explain this is, is that uh, filter the FET category, which, which is a kind whose object is Lagrangian submanifold, depends continuously on a, uh, on a Hofer, oops, I'm sorry, on a Hofer Chekhanov metric of the Lagrangian submanifold. So that, 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 that's the statement about this. Uh, uh, House of convergence of filtered infinity category. So I just want to recall very briefly what is the filtered infinity category. The filtered infinity category is some, uh, some object. So there is a set of objects, which is a set. And you have a two, two objects. Then the space of morphism is a um, uh, free lambda zero module and is filtered. So each, 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 each uh, morphism is a Free lambda zero module. And you have a sequence of operator MK, K1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. That's called infinity operators. And M1 is a boundary operator of this uh, uh, lambda, free lambda zero module. It's free as boundary operator. And M2 is basically the compositions. And the composition is uh, associative up to the chain homotopy. And M3 is a chain homotopy of the associativity of the compositions. And M4, M5, blah, blah, blah. You have this total infinity thing. So that is this infinity object called the filtered infinity category. Yeah. And something I want to explain is that, so suppose you have this infinity category, and it has a should metric B. And the definition is something very close but I, to what I explained in this, uh, at the beginning of, in, in the case of complex uh, geometry. So you have this C object C and C prime. And suppose you have a morphism T from C to C prime. And the morphism T prime from C prime to C. And, and T and T prime are closed objects. It means that it, M1 is zero. And if you compose T with T prime, then it, it is uh, similar to T, T to the power epsilon identity. Ah, infinity category, we can put the axiom so that uh, identity morphism exists in a natural sense. 
And, and then uh, again, the T prime and T composed is just D of the S prime uh, uh, modulo T, T epsilon. So this is a kind of metric. And actually, uh, to have a good theory, I need to enhance this a bit. It's a whole, so it's called the infinite distance. So I, I want to call this metric D as a Hofa metric. I don't know, but then this is called a Hofa infinite metric. So that says that uh, for D, we have this T and T prime and S and S prime. So that uh, D T1, D T1 prime is zero and it composed T1 and T1 prime is uh, T to the power epsilon up to D S1, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, the next thing is that I want to compose S1. So S1 is J homotopy. Then I want to compose it T1. T1 and S1. And then I want to take this S1 prime and T1. So these two, I think this, is, this should be minus. And uh, uh, this minus is, is something like, uh, you, you can say that this, this, this difference is a uh, chain map. D, D is zero. And uh, for some reason, I want, to, I want to find some chain homotopy. I want to, I want to assume that this is a boundary. But in a complete generality, I don't know how to prove it in a just homology algebra. So I assume that there is a S2 whose boundary is this difference. And also S2 prime, which has the opposite direction is a boundary difference. So this is the second step of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, chain homotopy. And you can go into infinity. That's called the infinity, which one can define. And this is the infinite distance on, on a modular space of uh, object of field of infinity category. And so there are some claim that this, this distance satisfies triangle inequality. And this is not terribly difficult, but not, not so easy. You, you have this uh, infinitely many type homotopy things. You, you, you want to compose it, and you read some homological algebra. And finally, I made, manage it, but it is some non trivial things. So, but then, then the, the, the relation to this, to the Lagrangian flare theory, the following thing, we consider L a finite. Set of Lagrangian sum manifold uh, so that the two elements are transversal. And then we can construct a filter of infinity category whose object is L together with something called the bounding quotient, which I uh, introduced the Ota Ono, but I don't want to explain so much. And the, the, MVD, and the, and the ch chain complex is just a, 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 a small bit of space is a chain complex which calculates player homology of Lagrangian sum manifold. And, and M2 is obtained by calculating triangles. M3 is calculating rectangle, blah, blah, blah. That's something called the square category, which is introduced by 20 years ago. Then the theorem, uh, it, it is, if you have this phi and have Hamiltonian different morphism, and you have L and the phi of L is contained in L, then the, this infinite distance between this L and the phi of L is smaller than the Hofer norm of this phi. So, so this is somehow a category. This is, this is so, so, so you have this pure, purely algebraic definitions of two objects in a filter infinity category. And you have another definition, a geometric definitions for the um, uh, uh, distance between the and sum manifold. It's over Chekhanov distance. And this theorem says that over Chekhanov distance estimate this uh, categorical distance from the above. So that is the way how we can. Uh, 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 and also, also, one can say that if this infinite distance between L and L prime is zero, then L is equal to L prime. That, that at least one can prove. I suspect in, in, in some cases that this, this categorical distance is equal to check of this, over check of distance. But I cannot prove it yet. But at least, at least I can say that distance zero in this categorical thing is equal, is equivalent to L is L prime. So let me. So now I want to introduce the uh, uh, group of household distance for Hilton and category. But uh, before doing so, I want to recall what the uh, group did about the metric space, something like uh, 40 years ago. Uh, so suppose you have these two metric spaces, x1 and x2, and the group defined the distance between these two metric space, say compact. And his definition is the following. So this, 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 this group of household distance between x1 and x2 is smaller than epsilon if there exists a third metric space Z and if F1, F2, which are isometric embeddings from X1 to Z and X2 to Z. So two metric spaces are isometrically embedded to some other metric spaces. And there is a notion of house of distance of the subset. And in that sense, X1, X2 is close to epsilon. It means that for any P in X1, 
there is a point Q next to, so that the distance in, in Z is smaller than epsilon. And for any Q in X2, there is P in X1, so that distance is smaller than epsilon. So that, this is the house, I think, definitely defined by Hausdorff, maybe 100 years ago or more, or the set of closed subsets of some metric spaces. And Gromov make it abstract. So that is a Gromov Hausdorff distance. And this, this one introduced by Gromov by 40 or 50 years ago. And it was very useful in Riemannian geometry, but still keep using by many people. For example, it appeared in Feldman's proof of Poincar conjecture. So this is the interesting, important notions. So, but again, I just, I just, I want to do some analogy for filter density category. And you, if you look at this definition, uh, it, is, it is almost the same as Gromov's definition, except to, uh, a few points. So suppose C1 and C2 is a filtered empty category. And I want to say that the distance is smaller than epsilon. If there exists filtered empty category C and F1, F2, and from C1 to C, C2 to C, and I, don't, I, I'm sorry, I didn't define homotopy equivalence or empty uh, functor, but you can imagine that it's something like that. And F1, F2 are homotopy equivalences from C1 to C to C2 to C, to a full subcategory. So you have this uh, full subcategory of C, which is homotopy equivalent to C1, and another full subcategory of C, which is homotopy equivalent to C2. And then we are require that uh, set of, uh, so, 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 so this gives an isometric embedding of the set of object of C1 to set of object of C, and the set of object of C2 to the set of object of C. Then I require that this, oops, also distance in a big space is epsilon. It means that, uh, Yeah, for any object of C1, there exists object of C2 whose distance at P and Q is smaller than epsilon in this bigger empty category and vice versa. So that is the definition of this Gromov house of distance of filtered NPT category. So there are some non-trivial theorems. One, one theorem is that uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this definition of Gromov house of distance satisfies triangle inequality. And most of the axiom of the metric is easier. Ah, ah. First of all, one bad thing is that I, I cannot prove that the Gromov house of distance zero implies homotopy equivalence. In the case of metric space, Gromov proves that if the two metric space has a Gromov house of distance zero, they are isometric. But uh, I don't know if this is true for the filter FET category. Well, might, it might be true. I don't have a counter example, but uh, at least if the FET category has a good finiteness property. But uh, the homological algebra is rather cumbersome, so I, I don't know how to prove it. So it is a pseudo metric, but at least it satisfies this triangle inequality. And the Gromov also proved this triangle inequality for this usual house of Gromov house of distance. But this proof is a bit more difficult than that, but one can do it. I need some homological algebra. And the next theorem is, uh, is this theorem. You have this uh, Cauchy sequence of uh, field and NPT category with respect to this Gromov house of distance. Then you have a limit. In, 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 in this sense. And for this theorem to hold, you need this uh, infinite distance, not uh, the usual this D uh, go from go from to D to D infinity. And if you look this Gromov's book 50 years ago in this green book uh, in, in French, that's I think only French book I have ever read. It's a structure metric for the variety Riemannian. And in this book, Gromov proved this kind of theorems for the uh, usual Gromov household distance. And his method is use something like approximation of metric space by discrete subset. That's very important in this kind of linear geometry. And, that, and, I, and I try to prove this, and finally I prove it kind of using some kind of inductive limit of this, uh, of this uh, sequence of filter FT categories. But anyway, so this is a second theorem. And this unit, limit is unique that uh, kind of is this, uh, with respect to this. Uh, I mean, we identify two NPT category with zero from household distance. Then we have a unique limit. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I want to skip this two slides. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I just remember this, this theorem, which I explained before. Yeah. So this is actually a consequence of something I explained. So. First, first of all, uh, uh, you know, this, this theorem says uh, if you have a two set of objects, L1 to Ln, and L1 prime to Ln prime, then the FT category generated by this 
the, the, the Gromov household distance is estimated by the supremum of the second of distance between Ly and Ly prime. That's first thing. And then we, we can use this limit process. So you have any countable set of Ravina, separable subset of Ravina sum manifold. You take this uh, countable dense subset and you take increasing sequence of finite set. And fi finite set, we construct this uh, NPT category uh, from this uh, technique. And then we take this Gromov household limit. Then you get you got this uh, uh, NPT category with objectively discountable set. Okay, so now this is a kind of general story of this Gromov household distance. So now I want to propose a few project so that Gromov household distance can be used. The first thing I want to explain is that I want to try to use it to study this uh, some, something like a structure of uh, of this closure. Actually, uh, or, or already this persistent homology type things are used by this Protrevich, Vitervo, Milan Cornea, uh, for, this, for study of this kind of Ramanian pair theory. And uh, I, I, unfortunately, I still do not do it enough, but uh, this is some proposal. So we consider this sufficiently big set. For example, some weak generator, which I will explain later. Then we consider this following map. Suppose you have Ramanian sum manifold. Then we consider this FET uh, category generated by this L and this big set. So you have a map from the uh, completion of the set of Ramanian sum manifold to some modular space of NPT category equipped with this Gromov household distance. And one can show that this is a continuous, actually one dip sheet that, that's followed from what I explained before. But then, uh, uh, then if this, uh, uh, if this uh, script L is enough big, one can imagine that this is an isometric embedding or at least embedding. So what, what's nice is that, so, so, so now this is an embedding from this completion of the space of Ramanian sum manifold to the modular space of NPT category. And, the, and if you go to the mirror symmetry, if you go to B model, then the modular space of NPT category looks like some kind of a Berkovich spectra. And if you re remember what I talked about this uh, uh, object with the category with coherency and this completions, that I think in some sense is some, some, some infinite dimensional version of a Berkovich spectra. And the Berkovich spectra is, is known to have some good property. As one of the important property, Berkovich proved is that Berkovich spectra is locally contractible. And so, so uh, this is the kind of dream. So I want to improve this uh, completion of Brahman sum, Brahman sum for is locally contractible using this embedding because Berkovich spectra is locally contractible. But I cannot do it. So, and, and if, if somebody can prove it, it is fantastic. So that, that's one, one possible project. And the other thing is that I want to do some fixed point theorem for this completions. And you see that the Berkovich spectra, one good example of Berkovich spectra, I think, is the Titz building. So Titz building is some, some, something which came from this uh, locally symmetric space of higher rank. And uh, most of use this fixed point theorem on Titz building to prove most of rigidity theorem of higher rank. So I think it is not so much a, a kind of crazy idea to try to prove fixed point theorem for this completions using this embedding. Why I want to prove this fixed point theorem, it's related to existence of invariant tori. So suppose you have an integrable system. So suppose you have this tor 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 torus vibration. Suppose you have a simple different morphism which preserves this vibration. You have a lot of invariant tori, which is a fiber. Then you start part of, part of phi to phi epsilon. And then phi epsilon kind of act on the space of this all around the sum manifold. And then at, at, when epsilon zero, you have a lot of fixed point, which is a kind of non-degenerate. It's a certain calm theorem. So I want to, if, if one can prove some fixed point theorems, then we might prove that this field of epsilon has a lot of fixed point on the completions. And the taking completion makes sense because as we learn from calm theory, most of the many invariant tori are just broken. It's not a, it's not a tori, but one might expect it, there might be some fixed point in this completion. The completion is a horrible object, like a D of continuous functions, but it is not, uh, it's better than nothing. So this is a kind of another dream and I cannot prove it. So if, if one of you prove it, I'm very happy. But uh, these two are kind of dream. I, I want to try to use this uh, from household distance. And there is something different. The next thing I want to mention is that uh, stochastic Hamiltonian equations. So what is stochastic Hamiltonian equations? So we consider random, Hamiltonian. So what is random Hamiltonian? You can, there are natural, uh, so this definition, we take this probability measure on a space of C0 functions of X plus zero T, X cross interval. 
it's a kind of a measure on a space of time dependent Hamiltonians. And if, the, if T prime is bigger than T, then we have less natural projections, X time continuous function X prime zero T prime to continuous function X prime zero T. That's just by restrictions. And there's some kind of Markov property of this uh, uh, random Hamiltonian is just, if you just push out this measure for T prime, then you get me a T. That, that's a natural property for this uh, kind of random Hamiltonian. So the question is that I want to study this, uh, this, this Hamiltonian equations, DP, so P and Q are double coordinate. DPI DT is a QI derivative of this uh, random Hamiltonian. DQI DT is minus of PI derivative of random Hamiltonian. So can, can we solve this equation kind of a random chi? Kind of, it should give some random work on a simplex manifold. Can we solve it? And the answer is, of course, no, because your Hamiltonian is, is just continuous. So this right hand side does not make sense at all. So it is, uh, it is almost impossible to solve it. Answer is no, because this is just continuous functions. So it, it, it equation itself does not make sense. However, so there are some propositions. So what, 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 so what, what, what we cannot solve this equation means that if you, start, if you fix this uh, initial, initial value, some point on the Hamiltonian, uh, so some point on the manifold, you cannot say how this uh, random Hamiltonian moves it by this Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. But what we can actually say is that if you fix some Lagrangian sum manifold as an initial value, then it makes sense how this random Hamiltonian moves it. So the statement is the following thing. Suppose we have this Lagrangian sum manifold, which is a closure, then uh, suppose we give a random Hamiltonian, we can define a probability measure on the path space on this completion of the moduli space of Lagrangian sum manifold, so that it depends on continuously on a random Hamiltonian. We have a natural notion of metric. And then this, this path space has a metric using the second of distance. This is the first property. And the second property is that if you, if you consider delta measure as a random Hamiltonian, which is supported by smooth time-dependent Hamiltonians, then it is actually just a one-parameter family of Lagrangians generated by this Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. So I think these two properties almost characterize this method. And we can just actually do it. So this is something one might try to say that this is a statistic Hamiltonian equations. And uh, this looks a very nice theorem, but I, I wrote a proposition because this is very easy to prove. So as, as far as I said, I thought that, okay, now this, is, this is a great theorem, but it's not so great because it's too easy to prove. And if you look this definition of whole check kind of metric, and you think about these two conditions, then if you think uh, 20 minutes or 10 minutes, you can, you can, you can prove it. So this is actually an exercise. What is deep is probably check several by Hohan Chekano. That this Hohan distance or Hohan distance is actually a metric. And we can use it to, so that very easily we can solve this, prove this thing. And uh, you know, one, one can imagine that this might be related to uncertain uncertain principles. You know, in, in, in a quantum mechanics, if you are in a phase space, it doesn't make sense that uh, at, some, at point zero, you are at some point in a phase space, exactly because of uncertain principles. However, it makes sense that at time zero, you are on some Lagrangian. For example, if you are in a cotangent bundle, and you can say at the time zero, you are on some cotangent fiber. It means that you know your position, but you don't know your momentum. That's why this uncertainty principle says. So another strange dream is that one can try to use this kind of things to study quantum statistics, but that, that I don't know anything about it. Okay, but, but at least using this proposition, one can do the following things. Suppose we have two Lagrangian sum manifolds in a simplex manifold, and suppose we have these two random Hamiltonians. Then uh, we take this uh, phi t h of l and phi t h, h prime of, uh, I'm sorry, this is l prime. So you, you move l and l prime by this random Hamiltonian. That's a measure on a space of Lagrangian sum manifold, and you take its spray homology. And what we can prove is that you, so you rely this spray homology in this kind of thing. So AI is an associated exponent. And we can define social exponent as a probability measure on the space on, 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 a, on a real line. So th this looks like kind of some, some interesting object to calculate. Unfortunately, I cannot calculate it. So I, I, and another thing is that I want to consider some kind of a white noise Hamiltonian. We have some C0 small Hamiltonian, but it's a kind of very uh, kind, kind of a Brownian motion. But I don't know what is a Brownian Hamiltonian analog of a Brownian motion. 
because it is very strange, right? Brownian motion related to heat, and it doesn't, it, so the heat, heat equation kind of does not preserve energy. That is contradictory to Hamiltonian equation. So I don't know what's a good, good idea of the, what is a random Hamiltonian, but at least if you are given random Hamiltonians, you, this, this uh, torsion exponent exists as a, maybe one can try to calculate it, maybe at least some Monte Carlo simulations and how it looks like. And if you have uh, some, some good theorem on this uh, AI as a measure, that, that looks nice thing. And then this is the further two, and we, we can do for the NPT particles. So suppose you have one Lagrangian sum manifold, and suppose you have an L cube of random Hamiltonian. Then we move L by this N cube, uh, this is phi, I'm sorry. So you have this N, N random, Hamilt random Hamiltonian Lipia monophysis. So at, at, at point P, you have this uh, random N, N set of Lagrangian sum manifold. Then we consider this uh, NPT category generated by this N random set. So what it means that you have a measure on a space of uh, NPT categories, and this measure is a kind of Borel measure with respect to the Gromov house of distance. So you have this, this measure. You know, the, the, this Freire homology is something like a two-point function. You have the standard amplitude, and this NPT category gives n-point function. So you can define this n-point function as a kind of measure for this random Hamiltonian. So this is something like I want to call this, uh, uh, um, suggestive Hamiltonian equations. And I don't know if there is uh, anything kind of reasonably uh, interesting and uh, non trivial one can prove because I just thought about this for a couple of months only. So if, if somebody, so this is, I think, if, if, if one can do really many things, then this would be a great thing. But I, 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 it's not yet clear because the theory I can prove is only this almost trivial proposition. So, okay. So this is about uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So now, Next thing I want to, so this is a kind of related to mirror symmetry. It is a generating criteria of a Novikov ring. So what is generating criteria? So as I mentioned, there are a lot of works about homological mirror symmetry recently, and many of the homological mirror symmetry uses something called a generating criteria. I think there are several generating criteria. I think one of them is by Paul Zaido, and the other is by Mohamed Abzai and those people. Why, why is this generating criteria is important? So NPT category is actually a very difficult thing to calculate. You know, they have a category and they have many operations, many modules, and each of that is, is kind of defined by difficult moduli space of polygons. But this generating criteria means that you have a finite, you have a finitely many set of Lagrangian sum manifold, and if you know what happens for this finitely many Lagrangian sum manifold, then you know everything. So that, that, that's a way to reduce this NPT category to something you can manage. And I think many, almost all proofs of homological mirror symmetry between this kind of things use this kind of generating criteria. So first you find some good generator and calculate operations for this finitely many things, and then you can use it. But, that, but this generating criteria works over Novikov fields usually. And I think I suspect that the over Novikov ring probably there, is, there does not exist finite generator. But you can still do something for this generating criteria over Novikov ring. That's something I want to mention. So first, first of all, we have this uh, Yoneda functor. So here have NPT category C. The Yoneda functor gives from C to right module C. And so I don't want to explain what, is, what means right module, but this is basically, you know, C is something similar to ring, then this is a kind of uh, right module of ring. And you have a, 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 so you have a category, then usual category, then there is Yoneda functor from category C to the category of functors from C to the category of set. That's your other functor. And you can do the similar thing for NPT category. So this is your other functor. So C is something like a category of right module. And right module is a, is a category, which is a DG category. It means that it, it has a morphism, it has a boundary operator and compositions, no higher. So, so we have this natural functor from uh, uh, NPT category to the right module category. So now, I, I want to consider the following thing. We consider L a finite set of Lagrangian sum manifold, and, uh, and, and, and that, that, then we consider L prime another such finite set. Then we consider its compositions. So first we consider NPT category whose object is L prime, and we can naturally embed it to NPT category whose object is L and L prime. Then we, you use one other functor whose object is the right module on this category whose object is L and L prime. Then we restrict 
this, this, this you get the infinity count category. So this, I think this this is L. Yeah, uh, right module over L. So you have this any L prime have an infinity category of L prime to the right module category over L. So that is natural natural functor. And the definition is that L, this MVT category L is epsilon weak generator. If you, you consider this category of F of L prime and if it image, which is a category of module over L, then you consider its image and if it's the, the household distance between F of L prime and this image by this Yoneda functor is smaller than epsilon for any L prime. It means that if you look this Freya theory of an object of L, you can, you can recover your L prime in order of epsilon. That is called this uh, epsilon weak generator. And we say it's a generator if epsilon is zero. So I want to find this weak generator or generator or this uh, FET category. Then it contains this information over Novikov ring up to order, up to order epsilon. So the conjecture, so conjecture is something related to this um, abzize criterion is the following. We have, we have some map called a uh, uh, open closed map from Hochschild homology to the ambient homology. And the, 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 the paper, which, uh, so Abzai's paper and something, I and what Ono is supposed to write with Abzai is that if this map is subjective on a cohomology of a lambda, then it is actually a generator. But to, uh, you look the proof, which is not yet completely written, then I think this, this one, I, I, I can also prove. This image contains the power epsilon by identity. Not identity, but it's the power epsilon by identity. Then, this guy is an epsilon weak generator. It means that uh, if the open closed map image is kind of almost contain one, then this, this, is, this is good enough. So this is a yet conjecture. I, 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 so I, we have to write this paper with the size and after that I try to prove this conjecture, but it takes some time. Okay, now I, I want to explain why this conjecture is good. So let me explain three two dimensional examples. One is S2. Then let L be the set of all great circles containing two points, north circle and south circle. It's a kind of, so this is a infinite set, but it's a separable set. Then uh, we can prove, so this one I, I can actually prove, that this open closed map contains t to the power epsilon one or any epsilon. You, you, can, you can just look at this uh, um, definition of open closed map and this is easy to prove. So it means that this, this L is a kind of generator of S2. So you have any Lagrangians, which can be very complicated, closed loop on S2. And if you, call, if you take a player homology on this S1, you know almost everything. So this is the first example. And the second is the case of T2. And you take L, which is a C times S1. And C is, a, 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 I want to make it countable, so it's a rational point. And we, we put another direction, just one, S1 cross zero. And then we can use very similar argument so that this is a generator. For this thing. The third, what happened? Oh. Okay, but, but that's the last slide, so I can just talk. The third example is just a Neiman surface of higher genus. Oh, if one consider, yeah, if one consider this Neiman surface of higher genus, and we consider the set of all closed geodesic. So please go, go to the next and that's the last two. We call the all cross geodesic with respect to hyperbolic metric. And that we can also prove is, is, is a generator once this conjecture is proved. So that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. <laughs>